classroom, just some uh, feedback on how we can best support you, um, but also it's going to act as your attendance for the day. So we do ask that you do fill that out at the end of our time together. This is a long time together because we really want you to dig into it and actually work with Active Classroom. This is where you get in through Clever to get into Active Classroom to get the platform as well as your students. They're going to use their DISD login through Clever as well to do that. But uh, we're going to go over all of that today as well as how to search for different activities, what it looks like on the, the student end, what it looks like on your end, and all that great things. So again, thank you so much for being here. And we really appreciate your time. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Ms. Knowles and carry it away. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was an excellent introduction. I appreciate that. I love setting the um, purpose for the day, just like we do with our students. So I am Melissa Knowles, and I have been teaching now for, I think, 17 years. I stopped counting because I'm still far from retirement. But I have been through um, K through eighth grade uh, in the library and in the classroom. So I'm really excited to be here with you because I've been with, active, with Social Studies School Service for now um, five years, I think, and I do all kinds of things with them, and I'm trained on all their products as a presenter. So I'm really excited to be here to present Active Classroom with you. As a child, I would have loved having this type of variety of learning experiences for my active little self. And my support today is the fabulous Carla Weinhold. She is going to be monitoring the chat and um, and answering any questions that she can and letting me know when I need to stop or slow down and all of those fun things. So Carla, do you want to do a little intro? Hi everybody. So my name is Carla Weinhold. I am on the East Coast in Maryland. I have been with Social Aid School Service for about three years. Just like Melissa, I do a lot of different things with webinars and trainings. Um, and I'm trained, I think, on a couple of the products. I don't think I'm trained on everything, but a good majority of their products. Um, I enjoy using Social Aid School Service. I use it in the classroom with my students. So I teach seventh grade world history in Maryland. So I'm really excited to just kind of share some things with you, maybe some tips and tricks that I've found that work with my kids. She is a fabulous resource um, as she does use it with, right, with your age group students right now. Um, I, and I didn't tell you, I'm in Alabama, so I'm over on that coast also. So let's go ahead and go over some session norms. So try to keep your microphones muted. Um, feel free to unmute. Since we're a small group, we can be um, very geared towards your needs. So during questioning and things, we can unmute and we'll just do some taking turns. Make sure your cameras are on and we're gonna interact using that chat uh, a lot. So any technical issues, questions, comments, if I need to speed up or slow down, Carla will be monitoring that. If you don't know where the speed up and slow down, um, I can't remember what they're called now, um, actions are, if you go to, um, you, are, you are now viewing Melissa Knowles' screen, you should have a pull down or pull up, depending on where's your, where yours is located. The participants, if you open the participants icon, you can see those um, different features. So like raised hand and some other ones, but I love that speed up and slow down, especially in this small group where we can really gear it towards what you need in your classroom. So today we are going to take a little tour of Active Classroom first. So make sure you're watching my screen at that time. Then we're going to explore Active Classroom as a student. Carla is going to be giving you a student number and you're going to use that to log in using a full fake email address for our students. So all you'll need is the number, everything else is the same, and I'll pop that up on the screen when it's time to do that. Then we're going to have a short break and then go into looking at Active Classroom as a teacher, grading, searching lessons. You're going to get to be a part of that, so after you watch me, you will do. Uh, those things yourself and explore and practice using some of those tools. So then we'll look at Active Classroom for Professional Learning and then we'll close and complete that out evaluation which does give you um, your attendance for today and um, if, if people leave early I guess we can get that to them right Heather? Absolutely we should we'll have their email address we get it to them. 
Awesome, thank you. I'll tell you another little trick that I learned in Zoom um, recently. If you are muted and you want to unmute quickly just to respond to a question or ask a question, you can hold the space bar down. While you're holding it down, it unmutes you, and then when you release it, it mutes you back, which is also really nice so you don't accidentally have um, things going on in the background. You can stay muted. But I love that little trick for these type of sessions because a lot of times people fumble for that button and finding it and having to pull it up and it takes a while. So I thought that was a fun little trick. So use that space bar to unmute. Okay, so the first thing we want to start with, you do not need to be taking detailed notes of everything today. You do not need to worry about remembering everything. Write down those things that are really interesting to you and that really spark uh, things that you may want to look into or try or maybe something you do definitely want to remember, maybe an idea that we share. So if you're logged into Active Classroom in the upper right hand corner, you can see your name and any messages you have. There's a question mark there and that question mark takes you to a ton of help. Probably the most important, we'll look at it in a minute also, but probably the most important is the email help button. I've had the co-owner of the company respond and they respond very quickly. There's also a detailed teacher's guide with images and step-by-step -step and also short how-tos of Active Classroom, like less than a minute how to assign or how to grade. So it's a great resource for you as you're learning or maybe you wanna learn some things that you haven't tried yet. Also know that that's available to students too. There are short videos for them and a student guide that's downloadable. So that question mark is there for them to support themselves in their learning and help answer some of the questions that they have. So have you all used Active Classroom? I know Mr. Hernandez has. Um, Carla, will you help me? Cause I can't see everybody and I may have. Has everybody used Active Classroom? If you guys just want to use the thumbs up reaction, I know one person's eating, Corey's tried. Good, yes, it looks like they've at least have some familiarity with it. Okay, awesome. So just really quickly, because I love this, um, uh, this little blurb about Active Classroom. It is student-centered and inquiry-based. Not only that, it's like having a book bookshelf of 200 different series and over 350 activities on your favorite social studies contents, topics, and resources that you get to choose from anytime you want. So I loved that. That's what Active Classroom is. It really is a giant resource for you. Like we were talking about health. There's even health and psychology and sociology and just a ton of resources. Not only that, it allows you to uh, those students meet those students need in their interest and their learning style. So we're going to take a look at that on this next slide. The types of activities available to you. Check it out. There are decision making activities where the students actually take on a role and make a decision as if they were in that time. There are web based lessons study skills lessons, um, simulations like acting and role playing. There are some um, tell the truth plays where there are three people uh, pretending to be a character and the students or the moderator asks questions to the three characters to find out who's the real um, George Washington or um, Betsy Ross, or I was trying to think of all of them right now. There are a ton of them, but I think that's such a fun way to present. There are PowerPoints, which are great. You can take a little snippet of it. There's even image analysis. I know primary sources is huge in your TEKS standards. So there's historical maps, mapping activities, like those sixth grade. It's a lot of geography and moving around to different places and learning about their cultures. So those are great activities for that. There's audio, songs, and videos, little short, usually very short videos, um, just to get a snippet of something or see a different view or a different time of something, or maybe you're comparing and you wanna have different resources. And then of course there are reading, some long and some very short and to the point. So let's dive in. Let's see if I can switch easily. to 
this one. Okay, guess you see my drive there. There, active classroom. So we're here. I wanna show you something really quickly. In the center, it says recent activity. They have just um, put out a lesson mapping the news, the George Floyd protests, which I was um, happy to see are on your grade levels. So there's a close reading and mapping activity with comprehension questions. I went ahead and assigned it in the student view so you can see what that, will, that activity will look like in the student view, but make sure you check out anything new is gonna pop up there so you'll know right away. So it's very current um, and we keep it very current and we even update old, older activities as things progress and change. So this is your home page. You have several icon icons on the left-hand side that you can access. You'll have more icons than your kids and a lot more resources. So let's start real quick at that help page. So I'm gonna click that question mark in the upper right-hand corner. Up, oh, I've been logged in too long and it logged me out, there we go. Okay, so here you go. You've got your user's guide which is the teacher and the student. You also have access to the student. You have those video tutorials, and I told you some of them are less than a minute, not all of them, but they're very short on grading, assigning, and you even have access to the student help videos. So those are right here. You um, have professional learning, and we'll look at that a little bit later. But let's go up, I'm gonna to have to move these pictures there. You see this contact us button? That is very helpful. It opens a um, form that you can fill out to access help. And like I said, they will respond to you quickly. Any question that you have, we want you to be successful with Active Classroom. Um, if you're wanting more health um, activities, suggest that in the box. Um, we have a ton of languages that you'll see in a little bit. And last time when Pam was presenting, the professional learning director, she said, please let us know if there are other um, languages you want. We will be happy to um, look into adding those. So that can be used not only for help, but also for um, suggesting different activities. So there are, once you go to any icon, you can go back home using the Active Classroom icon or you can click the three dots. And so here are the three dots and I'm just gonna go home, but it opens all of those icon options for you. All right, so let's look, I'm gonna go a little off the agenda. I'm gonna look at these maps and atlases first. So we're gonna look at these two icons. So I'm gonna click the map icon and basically what it's gonna pull up is an interactive map. Anytime you wanna customize a map, right here. You can even do dual views uh, in this. We're not gonna talk about really all the features right now, so that'll be more of an advance, but I do want you to know that it's there. Um, you could create timelines on it. We have, um, in the library, we have tracked stories and how they've developed. I like the Watsons go to Birmingham. So, this is a great resource and it is available to you. You can also change the type of map, by the way. There's so much in there. We could be here all day with just the, that map. So let's click on atlases this time. And here are all of the atlases available to you guys. So I'm gonna go over to the Atlas of Texas History and click. Do you, well, I'll go back and show you those. So here you have a full color atlas with facts about te Texas, your table of contents, how to use it. And what I want you to see, there's so many lists and lots of information, charts, maps, images. Look at this, all the states that would fit in Texas. Uh, there's timelines. There's going to be a vast array of resources for you. So that is just one of the atlases available to you that you can use with your students. Now let me uh, see if I can just do my back air there. Okay, if you look below, you do have a view button where you can view the atlas, which would have opened it just like I did. And you also have a share. You can share that atlas with um, your students or teachers, I'm not sure. So 
They are really great. Let's look at the World History Atlas too, since we have some World History teachers. Just flip through a few pages. Skip to page 30. Um, something that you do, you can do with this is zoom. You can also make it full screen. So it's a great resource. Zoom back out so I can turn the page. There we go. Can the, popu can the world's pop projected population growth be, sub be sustained? That sounds like a good project or a good D4 applying your knowledge activity. Good, so you can see there is so much information in here available to you. So those are the atlases. Now let's take a look at how to search. Oh, I'm sorry, let me go back home because I forgot to tell you. This uh, magnifying glass is activities. It doesn't say search, so I needed to go back and make sure that you knew what I had clicked. So you're gonna click the magnifying glass to search the activities. And I know most of you, but we've had some people come in, so I wanna make sure that in case they have not used Active Classroom, they can follow along uh, on my screen right now. So there are several ways to search. You can type in a keyword like Africa, and you're gonna get all of the activities related to Africa. 16 pages, <laughs> wow. They're gonna be in, in alphabetical order by the series type. And then you have several options. You can see that it's a reading activity using this icon. You can see the title. If you click the title of an activity, you get some details. So it says that it's a reading activity. It says the grade level, what type of assessment it uses, short answer, um, what kind of grouping you may want to use, although feel free to adjust it to what your students need. It's giving you the Lexile level, how long they estimate that it will take. So you get a lot of information just in that before you view it. Then you have your Lexile level. You can sort by Lexile level by clicking the blue Lexile category and then you can view assign select or favorite and we'll look at that we'll look at that in a little bit when we assign an activity so while we're talking and i'm showing you some of the search if you will in the chat um, type in maybe some of your favorite um, topics to teach and we'll we can look i can do some searching for those types those activities also and maybe we can go in and sign one so we've searched now right here just by keyword. I also want to show you that you can come over to the right where it says advanced. In advanced, you can search by several things. Subject, so you could do the drop down. Since we had several world history teachers, there's world history right there. So you could search all of the world history activities. I bet this one's going to be a lot of pages. 54. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Wow. Okay. 54. Now you can reset. This um, back curved arrow resets your search and that way your search won't stay in the box. So click that after every search that you want to change. So I'm going to go back to advanced and we can search by era or theme. I know eighth grade does several early American topics. So Civil War, Western Expansion, would, you could search by those. Um, era or theme. Then we can search by series title. So if you scroll down, you can see there are so many different titles available to you. History's Mysteries is a fun one. Um, I know Carla likes to do the Black Death uh, History's Mysteries where they have to be detectives and discover what happened. I wanted to take a quick look at an activity called uh, Texas Interactive Mapping Activities. So here you can see some options oh, wow. on different mapping activities that, you, that are um, related to those little chunks and periods of time. 
So let me go to Republic of Texas. Let's try that one. I just saw one that I was teaching today, the Spanish Explorers. I, I forgot to use that one. I might use that tomorrow. Oh, awesome. Okay. Um, you want me to pull that one up? Yeah, if you could. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Let me get this. My little yeah. man keeps the Republic of Texas, we won't teach that till probably the later part of the semester or spring. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. But we're, we're hitting on the early stuff right now. Right. Yes, that's it. That's okay, awesome. So here, and you can see when there's a blue box around a map or an image, you have some tools that you can use with it. So we can use the zoom tool. And it should be zooming in. I think it's being slow or else I deselect it there. So you can zoom in and look at the map. But for me, I think I would need a little bit bigger. And you also have an option to make the map full screen. So this is great for project, project, projecting or in a virtual environment. Um, and of course, your students have the option to do this also if they're working on the activities independently or in pairs. So I, if you just click off of it, it goes back. So they're gonna answer some questions. Up here, it says that there are eight questions. So we're just gonna go next. We're using the same map. Here we have a timeline and they're gonna drag and drop the answers. Of course, you have the answers here, but you can hide answers, which is right underneath your name in the upper right hand corner. And if you hide the answers, then you could present, you could project this if you wanted to do it whole group um, with your Zoom class. So I'm just gonna, up. Oh. And I guess you have to answer it first when you hide the answers. So you, which you would have done with your kids. I'm gonna go back to show answers so I can skip without answering. Or I could have quizzed you, Mr. Hernandez. <laughs> hey, go for it. <laughs> so that one is a drag and drop. Here we're using, um, I believe this is a different map. Positive. Um, and they're just answering a multiple choice question, but they use the map to answer the question. So here they're dragging things into sequence or order of time. So they just drag and drop. And then this one has a reading, a little um, short reading to go along with it in order to answer the questions. Now these activities, um, oh, look at this one at the end. So at the end, they're going to be doing, describe some of the hardships um, that he and his men encountered during the expedition why were his expeditions important? And they're gonna record their response rather than just typing it. So that's a really, I love those um, options for students. They don't always wanna type an essay, but um, I love that recording their voice option. So um, if you could tell the, the questions went, um, if you follow, if you do DOK, the questions went from DOK one um, to probably a DOK four. I think that may could be considered a four, but at least a three. So they're gonna go from easier to harder. So you may want to have them to do the first few themselves and then continue with the last ones maybe together if, your student, if you know your students need more support. Now this goes for any activity, so I'm not leaving you guys out in the other grade levels. Any of our um, Atlas activities, at, um, Atlas of World and U.S. History Level 2, um, World Atlas, I think it's called, and there are several activities that follow this uh, same type of format on lots of different topics. Okay, I'm going to go back to Active Classroom now and go up and let's go through, I'm gonna reset, using that reset button. Let's go to the last activity type. Here you can search, maybe you know your students need something different, maybe they need a simulation or you've been doing a lot of reading and you want them to do a video analysis. You can um, select those and it will show those, I, those um, activity types and then you can narrow it down more by doing a search. Also, you can search by your TEK standards. So if you go to standards and choose your grade level, 
and state content standards are going to be your TEKS, and then update. So now. Oh, well, wow. okay. Yes. So um, which one would you guys be on now? Uh, probably this one, identifying reasons for English, Spanish, and French exploration. So if I select that one, I'll just go ahead and do it. It'll automatically go ahead and pull up all the activities related to that TEK. And you've got seven pages of them. <laughs> Sometimes that's the fun of narrowing it down. So you have that option too. And a little bit later when we get into our teacher um, experience, we're gonna have you um, do some searching and assigning yourself. I think um, I do wanna show you a couple more before we go into the student. Um, and one of them was that mapping the news. I love these. There are some uh, based, as we said, on the pandemic. But you can see here the protest. You've got your objectives. If we click standing up for justice, you have a little reading summary. The next option is a mapping activity. And it says expand to full screen to work best. And so the students now are going to are going to um, complete the map and create the map as they go through the questions. So they'll just click next here, and then they have summary questions. So I know you guys are more um, historical in your time uh, to some to some extent, except for sixth grade probably. But you may want to do some comparison. Um, of uh, movements and things from the past and today. So these would be some great activities just to keep in there in your mind. Okay, let me do one more. And we'll get going. I love history unfolding. I noticed that primary sources were huge in your teaks. So I'm gonna do, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot I, I had it up here. So really quickly, this um, there are key decisions, as I said, where they get to um, read a little scenario. This is something you're going to want to do at the beginning of, an, of, of a time period where they don't know very much about the content yet so that they can truly not know what happened and more make a decision based on what that person knew and what, you know, the information they had at the time. So they're going to be Santa Ana and they're going to decide what to do about the attack on San Antonio. So they have a little reading section. Then they're going to answer some comprehension questions, short, and finally make a decision. So this is fun to do maybe a four corners where they um, do an agree, strongly agree, disagree, strongly disagree. And then as students present their reasoning, the student allow your um, classmates to change sides. Maybe they want to change their mind a little bit and go back and forth. So I think that's a fun thing to do. And you can, of course, tell them what really happened or you can um, allow the learning later. So maybe they could find it when you find um, when you find the answer of what really happened, then you could, they could um, maybe write in the discussion board or send you an email in their learning. So as they're learning, they would find the answers themselves. And history unfolding. I love these activities. You're gonna get an introduction in the history unfolding to what they are learning. So the students are going to find out what are they supposed to figure out in this activity and what they focus on. So this is gonna be the American textile industry. So you have an image to analyze and some background information. So the student would read the background information and then analyze the image. We have that blue box again, so we can select the image to analyze. And then we have some options on the side. We have that zoom full screen and we have another feature here called the four quadrants. So this one is sort of a, an act, a comparison. Previously, textile work was done at home. Now we're using factories to make our textiles. And so there's a ton of questions that you can ask your students through this, like um, 
Would you rather work at home or in a factory? If you look at the teacher's guides, I know sometimes we don't pay much attention to those, but the, the teacher's guides in Active Classroom have some really good information, um, extension activities, and this one will guide you through questioning and different things to do with your students while they analyze. Then we're gonna move on to two. So here, let me go ahead and click the image. Here the students are trying to figure out there were a lot of technical advances, technological advances during this time that, that um, helped the Industrial Revolution. What are some things that they see in the picture that, would, uh, that are some of those advances? Why do you think the factory was built here? They can also do, and I see where they are not inferencing, they're just noticing the things that they see, and they can also then go to what do they wonder about? wonder why the people are in the canoe and not on the boats. There's a lot of things that you can do with this and they're all ready for you. Here's an interesting one. What about fashion during the time? Textiles are now being mass produced. Um, poor people, How, why, does, why do they need to advertise fashion? What are some differences that you see today? There's just a lot of things that they can go into with their, with these images. And they're doing it, they're practicing using all those primary sources. Okay, so are you ready to log in as a student? Carla, have you given everyone their number? Yes, I have already done. So I'm going to go back here. Um, hey, but Oh, yeah, I'm, uh, I was still doing another training, an active classroom training. But, um, oh. <laughs> okay, so now I think, I hope I've got that on the screen. You're going to log in, at, in as a student to my classroom. So you're going to go to www.activeclassroom.com and you're going to use that, those user credentials, student and your number at knowles.edu and then use password as the password, all lowercase. Super easy. So if you could do a thumbs up or let us know when you get in, I wanna make sure everyone is in. So I wanna stay on this slide, but I'm gonna to have to log out of my teacher account and log in as a student too for you. If you're having trouble logging in, that reminds me that you need to log out if you're logged in already as a teacher, you'll need to log out as a teacher and log in using these credentials. And you may actually have to click that log out button in the upper right hand corner of Active Classroom. And if you use the participants thumbs up, if you click on more, you can get the thumbs up sign. Or you can just click the yes, either one, to let us know you're logged in as a student. Perfect. So it's student number at knowles.edu. And then password is the password. Should say the word student and then the number Carla gave you at Knowles, just like Beyonce.edu. So Carla, if you'll just let me know when most people are in. And then if you need support still getting in, you may also message Carla and she can put that um, information in the chat box. You can also, you're also welcome to follow along on my screen if you wish. So, so far I only have two. I know Amber has given a thumbs up and I know Angela has. Okay, well, I'll get a couple more because that's not, that's all, yeah, that's only two. Well, I have my thumb up. I think it disappears after a couple of seconds, so. Ah, uh, thank you, Dahlia, I appreciate that. No problem. Thank you. I didn't know that, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. All those times I've wondered why no one has responded. Okay. 
Well, I'll go ahead um, to the teacher's view. If you're having trouble logging in, um, send a message to Carla and she will gladly help you. So let me change my screen share. All right. Log out. Do twins. All right. It does not like that we have a simple password on there, does it? So here, um, do we have more people logged in by any chance, Carla, that you know? I'm, I, I have not gotten any responses and it looks like, you know, everybody's good to go. Absolutely fine to follow my screen. So this is the student view. This is what your students would see. So you can see they have a lot less options on the left-hand side. They have the assignments and grades, they have the maps and their discussion board. So we're going to look at Texas Studies Level 1, Government and e Economy, Texas's Early Economy. So that's the one that I want you to select first. So notice that your instructions are gonna pop up first. So what I want you to do is we're gonna be reading and highlighting a very important point Now I'm gonna close this instructions, but just know underneath the student icon right here, the avatar is a piece of paper. If they forget the instructions, it's right there that they can open it again and it pops right back up for them. Okay, so let's go to the left-hand side. First, you have some vocabulary options here. So you have these vocabulary words but we know there may be some other words in the reading that the students are having trouble with. So let's go to Texas's early economy. So notice here that hunters and gatherers, Spanish missionaries, they're also over here on the left-hand side. That's not in every activity, but in this one it is. So this, you can see that it's, um, this, uh, the hunters and ga gatherers and Spanish mis missionaries and all these readings below it are sort of tabbed over. So they're in that um, topic, the subtopics. Okay. So students are gonna come up with sometimes words that they don't know. If they don't know a word, they can highlight the word or double click the word and it will highlight it. And then they can go up to the tools in the upper right hand corner where we found the instructions and go over to the enable speech button. So here, now they have some options. If you click the world, I'm sorry, the open book, it's going to open a dictionary. On the left-hand side, you can see that now we have a definition for the world word cultures. I love this feature. Students can ask, they can Google it, but a lot of times they won't. It being embedded in the program, I think is much more likely that students will actually use it. Um, no one knows they're using it. You know, it's just, it feels like a safe place and it's right there for students. So um, vocabulary should not be as much of a barrier. You also have some options here to play the definition. I'm gonna do that real quick. Cultures. So it would read the word and if you clicked the definitions, it would read those. You can also go down, there's a lot more here. You could even do some choose the way it's used in this sentence type. There's another, to cultures. Oh, let me do baskets. Next to the open book dictionary is the picture dictionary. When you click that, 
it's going to show you an image of the word. So for ELs and um, students that may just need, they may just be visual students and want to see uh, the image, that is a very good support for your students. Lower reading levels, so maybe they didn't understand, maybe the dictionary definition was just, it was just too much. So seeing the basket in the picture form can help. Okay, another thing that you can do besides use the dictionary and the picture dictionary in the upper right hand corner, it are use the highlights. So if you go over next to the instructions, you got a little pencil. It says add annotations. So here, what you could do is maybe you have the students choose a highlight color and do the um, green. And maybe under annotations, you have them write their own definition in their own words about a basket. So a woven carrying device. What would, oops, thank goodness it checks your spell in there. Um, so I'm thinking, what would students say? And then when you click Save Changes, it shows up highlighted in green and on the left-hand side. I asked you this time to highlight a very important point. So I'm going to highlight just this first sentence. So while I'm doing this, please do a couple highlights with me. So when I selected the highlight pin tool, I'm going to do the drop down. I added an, a highlight option when I created the assignment. Very important point. So I'm going to check that. And then maybe you want them to say why they thought it was important. And when you save changes, it's now highlighted in red. And on the right hand side, they can see that they have a very important point. So if you will, um, let me go ahead and go through a couple of these um, other options really quickly. Um, one of the tools that is really almost across the board for social studies school service products is the read to tool. So you can click the hand button and select where you want it to start reading. So maybe you want them to read hunters and gatherers. So when I click here, it's going to start reading. Cultures that didn't live near water depended upon gathering acorns, seeds, and roots for survival. They made baskets that were so tightly woven they could be used to collect seeds and carry water to their small So I love that. I love that it's highlighted. It's highlighting the word because we know how connections are made in our brain. The more you see here, the more um, of your senses that are able to interact with the learning, the better they're going to learn and the faster they're going to understand it. Now, let's say you didn't like the voice. You can change it in these settings. So here you can change the speed. Maybe the students need it to be slower. Um, you can change the voice. You can also change the text highlight color. So maybe there are certain colors that your students just um, um, that, that work better for them. And then I just know the click and hover, you can change those also. And so let me go back to cancel. Not only that, we know we have all kinds of students. We get whatever the parents send us, um, all kinds of nationalities, cultures, we can also change the, click stop, and select that, um, change the language. So when you click the world, oh, I looked at my highlights. So I'm just going to highlight this sentence here, or two sentences, and click the world. And now it is translated into Spanish. Also, it will be read to them if they click that play button. So reading is not as much of a barrier. Maybe um, ELs or language learners need to read it in English and then also listen to it in Spanish to better digest the comprehension end of it. 
of the text that they're needing to read. But all that is helping our students. Now, if you go back to this settings wheel, this cog on the right, if you go to translations, we have over 30 languages that we can translate here. So, so many. And as I said, if you click that question mark and contact us and you have other um, language ideas, we definitely want to know and take those into consideration. Um, just so you know, also this uh, four sided arrow, you can move this around on your page to wherever it works for you. And then, of course, you would turn in your assignment. So now I want you to interact in this student view. I've assigned several options among your grade levels for you to look at. And if you will, at some point, if, um, if you will go ahead and turn in your assignment here so we can look at some highlights, I'll go ahead and turn this one in too. So I can remember and I can use mine. That way when we go into the grading, I can show you some things that you can do with the highlights. So now it's submitted and it told me that I turned it in. So if you'll click the active classroom at the top and just browse through these options. So we'll give you um, maybe five minutes to do that. And when you come back, Think of any questions or comments or things you really liked in using these activities. How would you use them with your students? I realize I swapped my activity. Let me go fix that really quickly while you guys are in the student view. Okay, if you tried to do the material world, Molly, it should be great. It's now available. Sorry about that. I refresh, it should show. There. Well, at least you can see how easy it is to change or fast because you're on your own screen. If you have any questions, feel free to ask out.
Miss Holman, um, culture, that uh, material world would be a great one for culture if you want to take a look at that. Okay, thanks. Yes. There's also what um, what I eat, which is a neat take on culture. And for colonization, we've got that atlas. And you can see the difference in level one and level two, 13 British colonies. And there's also that map along with this explorer activity, which is really good for mapping skills. What did you put in the search? I, like the font is really small. <laughs> okay, where? When you did what I eat, did it? How did that come up? Okay. Oh, um, well, are you logged in as a teacher now? No, uh, -uh but I, I, I can later on. Yeah, we will, and you can search that later on. Okay. It's um, just that I'm having a hard time seeing your screen. Glasses are not working. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes, so I did not open what I eat. Um, okay. It would have been nice to know so we could plan, but luckily a lot of these hit, so that worked perfectly. Okay. But, but yeah, we'll definitely, I just wanted to, you to write that down or, or just keep that in the back of your mind as just something interesting. Okay, yeah, I did write it down. Thank you. I thought for some reason you had typed it on the screen, but I couldn't see it because the fun is so small. Thank you. All right, guys, so let's come back. And was there anything that you found or noticed or really enjoyed? Something you can, a way you could use it with your students in our new world or um, an idea that you had, something you liked? Something you've repeated? Feel free to unmute and, and share with us. Um, I like, I teach sixth grade, and so some of our kids are still struggling with reading. And then um, my school population has a high, lo a high number of ELs. And so the reading where it will read to you and also translate, I really love that feature. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorites. Um, and I'm glad that they've continued the importance of it. But yes, I love that it translates because, you know, you don't want, you know, reading and social studies go hand in hand and they just work very well together. But you don't want reading to be a barrier to their understanding of the content. So it's a great feature. I agree. Anything else? Ms. Huggins? Well, I was uh, just liking the activity and just uh, broke it down. So. Okay. Which one did you like? I was doing the South America uh, little activity, so using the atlas and then answering questions. Yes. Awesome. I love those atlas activities. It's so good to um, engage and decipher the charts and graphs and maps. Miss um, Brewer, did you find anything that you liked? Yes, I was playing with the um, the translator and writing the text as well. Yes, um, I don't know. So Carla uses it with her students. I'm wondering if you need some headphones for this, <laughs> because I would definitely, even if I, I mean, I was luckily became a really good re reader after I struggled early, but I would want, I love to be read to, and I love to listen. So I'd probably use that feature 
a lot, and I imagine in your classroom. Melissa, I do use it with my students, and it's there for all my students, but, you know, I have a lot of students that play a lot of sports, so I get kids, especially fall and spring, with concussions. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my kids will use that as a read-to function when they have to limit, like, their screen time. They can still get the information. They don't feel like they're as far behind. You know, that is great. That is something I have not thought about. That is awesome, especially in a, this virtual world now where students are having so much screen time, period. I know my eyes, I have to look off every now and again to refocus my eyes. Or I, So that's a great, I didn't even think about that. Thank you for sharing that, Carla. Awesome. Okay, anybody else? Mr. Hernandez, you can't get quiet on us now, or did he have to go? I know he said he wouldn't be able to stay. He just got pulled by his administration into a parent meeting. He sent me a message. Awesome. Okay. I understand. Awesome. Well, great. Okay. So let's go ahead and take our break, 10 minutes, and then we'll come back and we're going to be in a teacher view. Now let me switch my screen before you leave um, to break. Let me show you this so you know what we're going to be doing. Up. Oh. When you come back. So when you return, you're going to be logged into your teacher account at activeclassroom.com and you can log in through your Clever. Um, if you need to register, there's information there to do that. And then respond um, of the Active Classroom features so far. What do you think would be more, most useful for your students? And I think maybe we answered that, but there may be some other features that you guys think would also be useful. So I will see you all in 10 minutes. Melissa, I'm going to pause the recording so it doesn't have the break being recorded. Okay. We didn't record the last one, so good. And annotation options. I know we hit on it some in the student view. So just so you know where I'm at, if I go back home, oh, I'm sorry. Is everyone logged in? Were you able to log in as a teacher? So if you're having any trouble logging in as a teacher, you can go through Clever but um, you're welcome also to follow my screen, but please let Carla know and we will get you some help. Um, but if you are having trouble, feel free to follow my screen, but you'll have a lot more fun if you're in there on your own and can play around in just a minute. So uh, with the icons on the left-hand side, we're gonna click the assignment and grades. And I had to change the unlock date on one of my assignments. So all I did under this assignment was go to edit, edit the unlock date, and it was now open for you. And I saw that the Molly assignment was completed. So let's go to gradebook. Up in the top center, you see manage assignments, and then you see gradebook. When you click gradebook, you can look at your student data. So let's see if I can find that um, Molly act. On the next page, whoops. We'll go back over. So you can see we've got a lot of assignments completed. Ah, I thought it said uh, completed, but now I don't see it. Okay, so let's look at this um, interactive or look at their grade book first. First of all, you can export your grade book into PowerSchool. So that can help you. I don't think they talk to each other as far as doing it automatically yet, but I'm not 100% on that. Um, we can find out if you guys would like to know um, if they do work together. You can see that some people have a zero out of six, some people a seven, which I didn't give you a whole lot of time to complete the, that assignment. But let's look at this uh, student one, Texas interactive mapping activity. When I choose the activity and go to student one, you can see, oh, sorry, I clicked off that too fast. You can see that they've turned it in and it's been graded. Anything that's multiple choice or true and false will automatically grade. So here you can see several things. You can see when they turned it in, you can view it, um, you can see the score that they have and the grade. You can even adjust and change the grade. Maybe you wanna give them credit for something, um, 
that is not given credit for down here. You can put in your feedback. Good job, or I see you didn't complete the assignment. Do you need help or assistance? If they didn't do well, or if they didn't complete some things, maybe they forgot or missed that part, you can also get, allow them to have a new attempt. So as we scroll down here, you can see the multiple choice have already graded and we've got several correct answers. But then here, when they're matching the settlement, they're struggling a little bit. So I may want them to redo that part. I love this. You can type a response like, um, what happened here? Do you need help? Put them with a partner, get with your group partner, with someone else that struggled and maybe working together, they can figure it out. But you can also record a response and then play it back. So that's a really cool feature, especially in this virtual world. I think everything is a little bit um, less personal. And so that record, recording a personal message, maybe they really struggled with a part, but you could say, you know, you did an awesome job on this part. And then you can focus on maybe what things that they learned, but you can give them lots of different types of feedback. So here was a drag and drop, and I love here that you can see exactly what was right and what was wrong in what they did. And then at the end, oh, they had a written response. Why didn't you answer that? What was going on? Maybe they had a tech glitch, who knows? So there you can see um, what it would look like in the grading part. Remember, you can change any of those. Maybe you only wanna get partial feedback for this question, you can even um, select it to be not correct at all. And so you can change any of those and then the points that they get. So let me go back to the grade book and get one of your annotations. So let's choose this world atlas and that was student five. Again, we've got the responses here, but I want to, I want you to see this view button. So when I click view, oh wait, a world atlas is not going to have a highlight. I apologize. <laughs> anyway, when you go to view, you can view the assignment. Maybe you need to see was it, was something correct or not? Do you want to give partial correct, um, partial credit? So you can view the assignment to see, um, to assist you in your grading. But I wanted to show you um, there, the Texas studies. Let's look at that. So they've gotten zero out of six because we didn't answer any of the questions, we just highlighted. So now let's look at someone that turned it in, student eight did, good, and view. And hopefully, yes, we have a highlight, okay. so. Cultures was highlighted and main idea was selected and there's no annotation created. If there was an annotation, you would have an option to respond to that annotation. So you could say something like, oh, that's a really good definition. And when you respond to their annotation in the student view, they're gonna get a bell next to their annotation. So they know that you have responded. I believe they also get a message that tells that, that you have responded to their activity. So they can go and check. And so there's a lot of great ways to do, to feedback with your students on what they're doing. And that's a great, um, another way to use those annotations uh, for communication. Okay, so let's go to a sign in a activity. So I'm gonna go to my three dots on the side here and go to activities. And I'm gonna search colonization. And so let's go down to a different one. Um, maybe I'll choose this document. No, that's probably a higher level. Let me see if there's a Power Basics. These are great activities. So I'm going to choose this Power Basics. And it is a reading activity. Now, when you're ready to assign, maybe you viewed the activity, you know what you want to do with it, you can click this um, Assign button, which is the Person View. You can also open the activity. Oops view the activity 
and assign right here. So if you're in an activity and you know you want to assign it, you can do it right in the activity. So I'm going to click assign activity. When that happens, this is all you need to assign. So you have the title here. You can add in your own student instructions on what you want them to do. You can create your own due date. So we'll create a due date of Friday and an unlock date of today. How are you going to show your grade? You want it to be in points or as a percentage. Now here is a tool that Carla was talking about, custom highlights. So let's click custom highlights. When you click that, you have some automatic highlights that are going to be in every lesson you, or every activity. You can cancel out any of these um, if they're distracting to your students. One way I know Carla said she liked to do, um, I love this. So when they find something that they really like in the reading, they can create a highlight. I love this. Then you're just going to choose maybe pink for love and add highlight. When you do, it pops out under your assignment highlights. So again, you can choose, you can create ones for vocabulary words, main ideas, supporting details. Maybe you want them to look for something specific and do some comparing, something that supports it or something or contrasting, something that in a way it's different. Maybe you want them to, you can really gear it towards what you want your students to do. Maybe you want them to highlight anything they have a question about so that you can address those things that they're not understanding. There's just so many ways that you can customize these lessons and activities to meet your students' needs. I'm going to go ahead and click done for those right now. And I want to show you another way to differentiate and customize for your students. Maybe you have some students that really did not get the Cortez expedition, so you want to have them read this. You can unselect and select any of the parts that you want. So you can assign the Cortez to just a group of students or individuals. You can assign um, maybe you want to assign more to more students. Uh, I mean, to your whole class, sorry. So maybe you want to assign um, all of the readings to your class, but you don't want them to see the activity yet. You want to assign that in a second assignment. I mean, really you can make it whatever you need. I really love this because a lot of times when students see a big list of readings or activities, they get a little daunted and they are really not comfortable with the activity. Well, here you can break it up for them. So they're just getting a small bit at a time. Also, it allows you to customize to what you need. Maybe you've already talked about Cortez and you just want to go straight to colonization and maybe the Inca activity. It's your choice. So again, you can assign to your class, to individual students or to groups of students. So when you select the students, it comes over here on the right. Another tool that I like that's an option here under instructions. So maybe you want them to compa compare and contrast Aztec and Inca empires. And under, under the instructions, you can select for it to show the correct responses after submitting. If it's not an activity that you're taking a grade for, this may not be a bad idea to do at least sometimes as they're getting instant feedback to what they're doing especially if it's a review type activity where you're reviewing for a test or something, that would be a good idea to do with your students. But it is, again, an option for you to customize to fit your students' needs. So when you click Save Assignment, you get a link here. So if you're using Google Classroom or um, PowerSchool, you can embed this, this link into the um, Oh gosh, I can't think of the name of those type of programs, but the PowerSchool or whatever learning platform that you're using, um, you can embed this link in so your students just click it and they go to Active Classroom. 
they may have to log in or they may already be logged in through Clever. So that is a great just link to add in there. And then of course you can edit assignments. All right, I'm trying to think. Um, so what we were thinking that you could do is explore Active Classroom now on your own. Find some activities, look up what I eat, <laughs> and other activities that um, you could use in the next week with your students. Try to find at least two or three. And let me go back to Active Classroom here. You can favorite the activity so you can come back to it. And then when you do come back to it, you can go to your advanced search and show only favorites. So now only those activities that you favorited will show up. And I can take off colonization and do that again. So if you'll find just a few activities that you really like that you could use in the next week or so, and plan for your students. Remember, you can search by standards and TEAK standards there, and those, that's a really good way to plan your units and, your, and what's upcoming. Melissa, can you also show them how to use the folder over here to the right so they can create sets as they find the work? That way they don't have to keep looking for it years later. It'll all be in one place for them. Absolutely. Okay, so the folder to the right are ways that you can um, create activity sets. So let's see, um, I'll just go back to colonization. So maybe you really like this level two colonization activity. In your search, you can see that your activity set builder is over to the right. You wanna create a new activity set and we're gonna call it um, unit two. Oops. colonization, and you could be as specific or not. My cursor's in the way. Uh, okay. And you can add in keywords. So if you want to be able to search those activities later, maybe you're doing different time periods or different um, colonization of different groups, you could put in those keywords so that you could search them later or add it into the title. So what you're going to do is you're going to find the activities that you want. Then you're going to go to select and do the check mark. So when you click check mark, it pops over in the right. So let me find a couple more. I love uh, these Colonial Williamsburg. That's going to be like, uh, it's going to be video um, activities. And they also have little flash games at the end that the students can do. It's really fun. Now in the Colonial Williamsburg, make sure that you look at the teacher's guide. Very important because there are activities you will not find in, in the videos and the um, flash um, games that are in that teacher's guide. Lots of different types of activities. So we'll do, um, let's find another. Oh, let's do this Power Basics colonization to independence. Okay, so when you find all of the activities you want, you're going to click save. And it says, I love this, your activity is saved. When you get an error in, act, in Active Classroom, usually it'll tell you why um, your data is wrong or you're missing something. There are even options here where you can share your activity set. You can add your own annotations. Um, maybe you had an idea of what to do with the activity. And you can also embed other links and places to go if you want. But let's look at share activity sets because we don't want to recreate the wheel. If you create an activity set, you can select by clicking share activity set, select the people you want to share with in your group. Type a message if you want to, click send, and it will be sent to those teachers those that activity list. So uh, that is a really, I'm glad that you um, reminded me of that at this point. It's a good time to talk about that because this would be a good time to make an activity set. But it's really easy to share. We had a teacher in the last session, she was sharing the link, but it linked to her active classroom. So the teachers couldn't access it. This way you can access it. Now when they get the shared, uh, 
activity set, they will still have to assign that. It doesn't auto assign to your students. You'll still have to go in and select and assign those um, to your student. So go ahead and create an activity set of some things that you will be teaching in the next couple of weeks. And Carla and I are here to help or answer questions if you need. You can even, I know your students are rostered and you have single sign-on with Clever, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Your students should already be in Active Classroom, so you could even assign if you wanted to. Practice creating those custom highlights, adding instructions, and selecting which parts of the activity you want to assign to your students. It's a good way to practice, you know, try just one thing. One thing first, if you haven't done much with Active Classroom up to this point. Um, these are fairly new in your age groups. These mapping U.S. history, close readings, they're excellent for, for a D4 um, activity or a assessment. I'm sorry, not the close reading, the, the quick writes that go along with it. But these close readings are great too. I'm gonna add that one into this activity set and I'm gonna go ahead and view that activity so you can see the close reading So you can see that in this activity, if you're still on my screen, they're looking for context clues. So again, we're bringing in those language arts and literacy standards. Go back and look at the quick right. If you were a colonist, which region would you want to settle in and why? As you're looking, you can check out the history tunes. They are really great. And also uh, the smart songs. The thing I love about these history tunes are the questions. 
So there's tier one, two, and three questions built into those songs. I know you use this, the songs, right, Carla? I like using the songs as like that kickoff to the unit sometimes to get them thinking about and getting them that hook or engagement that we want them thinking about the topic. It's a great deal. Um, dimension one, if you're looking at the C3 framework, they're great dimension one activities. And then if you wanted to come back to it for dimension four, maybe they can create their own lyrics as their assessment piece, which would be a fun dimension four. In our virtual world, they may could even do a music video. <laughs> Just as you're searching for things, I know we always have our go-tos, the things that we just really love. So you can create your own content in Active Classroom and still use all these resources. However, with as many lessons as are in here, over 3,500 or 5,000, getting my numbers mixed up at this point, you would not have to search for anything, I don't think. Here's an activity on so many topics. They told us the other day they were up for 4,500 lessons. 45, thank you. Yes, Jason was on and he said 4,500, which I knew it was around 4,000, but yeah, 4,500. Wow. Something. Um, something interesting in the mapping activity that I noticed in your TEKS is that they, um, they discuss environmental, economic, cultural issues in the maps. So really a lot of content in those maps. I did intend to show you that Molly material world. If you're interested. This is an image analysis material world. You could really use it in a lot of different subjects or, or different content topics um, for comparisons um, and also lots of great questioning. What do you think their house is made of? What do you think? What kind of climate do you think? What do you think they do? Well, there's a fishing net if you zoom in and analyze. Why are they all on their roof? Lots of great questioning going with these. Robert Menzel and his partner went around the world and they examined 12 locations. So there's 12 places and it looks at what possessions they have. This would be an average family. Oops. So the students can zoom in and analyze all of the different parts of the image and then they can look at the new possessions that they've gained. and compare. There's even a strategic reading and inference, inferencing questions available with this. It's a really neat way to explore places from the human side. And of course, what I eat is awesome also, because I like food. We'll look at those. Just 
Image analysis, facts, discussion questions, strategic reading, and those inferencing questions. Inferencing questions. It's a really cool, different way to look at the world. Okay, I neglected to tell you how much time we have. So let's do uh, three more minutes. And then I would love for you to share some of the things that you found. Looking at these what I eat, so I think it'd be interesting to have the students create what I eat Texas. See even how different families are different in their area. So you guys have good food in Texas. All right, so let's go ahead and come back. Does anybody want to share something that they found, an activity? Yeah. Don't all jump in at once. Angela, I thought you raised your hand. I know you're not on, I know you're on your phone. Do you want to share something, Angela? I was waving by, but I, no, I found a lot of good things on uh, just geography, kind of having them use the atlas again. Uh, that's the first thing we're kind of looking at, so uh, just kind of basic geography skills. So uh, that's where I kind of was, just divvying up by region. I saw some stuff with uh, the world and uh, North America and even Canada, some of the first little sections we're going to get into. So I was just favoriting it to kind of come back to it later. Fabulous. Did you see the reviewing map um, skills activity um, in the Atlas? I think it's the Atlas for world history, but it's basic, basic map skills. And then I think there was one. That, so yeah, I think I saw the one uh, basic one, and I, I think I did see it that it was the world history because I, I was just using the Atlas for uh, the Nystrom one for us, but I like 
that they do have the world history kind of atlas in there too. So that was really nice. Awesome. Good. All right. Anybody else find some activities to use? We haven't heard from either of the Michaels. Azel, do you have anything that you found? I found a bunch of stuff. Okay, what, what, anything you want to share? Um, well, I, I could just, you want me to share the screen? Um, just, I'll just say it. I'll just say it. Yeah. Um, so there, we're fixing to get into the, um, the Indian cultures of Texas, which is the, the Plains culture, the Southeastern, the Gulf and the, uh, Pueblo, Pueblo cultures. And so I, I just, I found each, each of the activities on, on those cultures. And what I've done is uh, I went in and I, I printed them. And instead of printing them, you can actually save it as a PDF. And then you can, you can kind of go in and you can change the document, yes. uh, take it out, things that you don't necessarily need and make, make it into very, very focused on what it is that you need. So you can actually go in and, and save these, uh, hit the print button and then, um, and then say save as a PDF. Once you save it as a PDF, you can go in and you can change the document up and, and take out things that you don't need and, and keep what you do and customize it to your needs. And so I found that helpful. But really what's great is that you could translate the document into Spanish for your, for your kids that are first year, you know, English speakers. And so you can also do that. You could take the, the PDF document, um, or actually you could translate it from, you, you can't do it from the PDF, but you can do it in, inside Active Classroom and then make your own document from the translated materials. So yeah, uh, it's the, the whole thing for me right now is, um, is the translation device. I mean, there's a lot of good reading material in there, but a lot of it is exactly what I need, but you can make it what you need. So, you know, you just gotta kind of play with it. All right, you're hired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if, if, it, if it'll help the, the Spanish speakers, you know, understand better, then, then that's what I, that's really what I need right now. But I, I'm, I'm trying to find, um, I wish there was a way you could customize the, the quizzes um, that go along with it, but, or, or is there a way you can upload your own questions and have active and have the kids be able to, to go through active classroom to take it? I haven't figured that out yet. So there is a quiz builder. I have not um used it as much yet it's fairly new carla have you used the quiz builder i haven't yet i've played around with it but i'm pretty sure that might be one of our focuses of our advanced sessions that's going to be coming up because that's going to be one of those advanced features so michael i know that there are going to be a couple other sessions where we're going to dig deep into certain features that, um, that they might be good to come back to yes all right. Well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll play with it. And if, if I can figure it out, maybe I can help show people at the next session. Yeah. And, and check out that, that help, that question mark help. There are some great like minute, two minute videos that might be able to help you as well. Sounds good. Thanks. Uh, yes. So, I know that was, so build quizzes right here under help, two minutes and 29 seconds. So, and also remember in your teacher's guide, it's I think about 16 pages, but um, you know, it is step-by-step -step pictorial directions for you. And on your own, as Michael said, play with it is the way I learn most new technology. There's also a professor, oh goodness. Let me plug this back in. Sorry about that. Um, there's also professional learning. So there's Active Classroom 101 and 102 that you can use. Those are some courses that are created for, for you to complete at your own pace, um, on your own time, as long as you want. So that is a good way also to get more help. And as um, Carla put in the chat, here is uh, how to link assignments in Schoology and Google Classroom, and hopefully we'll get something on PowerSchool soon. So that's all in that question mark, it, mark help. So we really got your back here. If, we, if this doesn't help you, we've got, you've got the contact us button. 
um, for that. So let me, um, and would anyone else like to share us anything that you found? All right, I'm going to go ahead and go to the professional learning page. Maybe I should close some of these tabs. Computer says no more. Okay, professional learning. So when I clicked, when I went to the home page and I selected the professional learning, or remember you can select it from the three dots on the left hand side. The first thing that pops up are these great micro credentials. So you can see all kinds of different topics that you may want to learn more about, like developing and using compelling questions. If you um, download that micro credential, you'll get about a 15 hour course that you can take. And so what you will do is you will read some research and view some research on the topic. Then you're going to look at different resources. Finally, you'll use it with you'll um, use the new learning with your students and then show evidence of how you have changed and grown as a teacher through this learning. Once you complete it, you'll get a digital badge to add to your email um, that you are now certified in that micro credential. So they're really fun, free, again, at your own pace. Pace, do it, um, take however long you need. So the course has already talked about, that was the um, Ex Active Classroom 101 and 102 under the question mark help button. Then there's also webinars. And chances are, if you open a webinar, you may very well hear Carla or myself or several of the other presenters. So here you can see upcoming webinars and you can register on the right hand side with the blue button. And you can also watch previously recorded webinars like this one on civil discourse along your age groups was fabulous. Uh, he did a really good job of how to talk about controversial and contemporary subjects. Um, so those webinars are available to you because we want to support your growth, not only um, in using Active Classroom with your students, but also in your growth just as a teacher and as a educator. So let me go back to sharing that PowerPoint. And I just put a plug in for my webinar in November on using Active Classroom and the discussion tool. So feel free to register and join that one. <laughs> Definitely sign up for that one. Yes, it's gonna be great. We have one coming up, in fact, tomorrow night um, that Jessica is doing about best practices in digital um, teaching. Okay, so again, searching and then that eval. So the evaluation, Carla's going to put this link in the chat for you. If you will fill out the evaluation and that will be, as Michelle said, your attendance for today. So fill that out and remember any questions, any concerns, comments, suggestions, help at socialstudies.com. And I really mean any, even if it's something like, how will I teach this with my students? Or how can I gear this towards this environment or this situation? Please, we're here to help you. So five minutes early, just in time to do the tiny eval. I do wanna thank you all for being here tonight. I love these smaller groups where you can actually talk to each other. Um, so that was really, uh, exciting for me to have today. Although I wish more people had come, do tell everyone because that, if they've been using Active Classroom so they didn't want to come to the basics, you do have to, a couple sessions of digging deep into Active Classroom. And Carla, what grade are you teaching the six through eight? Uh, 